welcome to episode three of the Show Me Reptile Show show podcast. We are here this week with uh, Mickey and Scott again, and we've got a special guest over here. Blah. Luke. <laughs> this would be Luke. Luke is Scott's son, and he's also a reptile lover, a ball python breeder, a gecko owner. What Whatever. else do you have at home? Too much snakes. Too much snakes. I think that's that should be actually maybe the title of our podcast. We all have too much snakes. Uh huh. Yeah. Tap our audience. Too much snakes. Well, to be fair, I have three snakes, two leopard geckos, wait, two crested, three leopard, and one bearded dragon. So. So do you take care of those, or do your dad take care of those? Both. But mainly your dad. Yeah. All right, well, one of, our, one of the reasons we have a special guest here this week, we kind of wanted to cover the topic of the, the future of the hobby, uh, what we do to help welcome young people into it and, and new reptile keepers in general, and uh, you know, just kind of cover a little bit of that. So, Mickey, you want to tell us a little bit about uh, how you set up and decided uh, to make sure that the shows were family-friendly and kid-friendly? Uh, well, we, we set them up, you know... First, first thing that we did was, uh, you know, when, whenever we originally started the shows, and, and some of the locations still have them, but uh, we have education tables set up for the kids. Uh, usually it's, it's a local rescue or whatever, and, and they're there, and they're always happy to let kids come touch the animals. A lot of the vendors at the shows are really happy to kind of share their animals with the kids too. And, you know, something, something we did right off the, the get was uh, the kids 12 and under are free. Uh, we always wanted to encourage bringing kids in because I know that's the future of the industry. And uh, it's been really crazy over the years. Like I've watched some of the kids that, you know, would come to the show as little kids. Now that I've been doing this for so long, like they're like younger adults that are breeding animals. And some of them actually work here at, here at the company now. So yeah. Yeah, one, one special note on that, it is uh, kids 12 and under are free with a paid adult. You can't just drop your kids off at the door and, and leave them, please. Please don't do that. Yeah, we <laughs> shut the daycare down. Please do it. We'll, we'll throw them out. You got to come pick them up. Yeah. <laughs> or we'll put them to work. Yeah. Sweeping the floors, putting chairs. Yeah. Scrubbing. You hear food. that? So don't let them stay. <laughs> so what, what about you guys? What, what age were you when you first got into reptiles? Hmm. Shoot, probably six, seven, eight, something like that. As soon as I, as soon as I start going outside and catching stuff, <laughs> I always, I always had a real big interest for them. But I had parents that didn't really allow us to. Uh, you know, they were really fear. They were afraid of snakes. My mom hated snakes and stuff, so she hated anything scaly. So they didn't really support any of that stuff. Uh, we used to catch them outside and play with them and stuff, and let them go. But my mom was not in my house, so. Yeah, I was fortunate. We had uh, we had some you know some reptiles that we kept in the house. My sister and uh, her boyfriend kept snakes, so we had those in the house when I was young. Luckily, my mom never was afraid of them. Actually, still loves them. Every time I get something new, she insists on holding it, and uh, she even has one blue tongue skink of her own. Yeah, I I don't know. I I really feel like it's super important. You know, that's why we uh, you know we're we're working on a, a team to do our do more education and outreach, you know, and, and we're hoping to grow that in areas where we have more shops and stuff because it is really important to get kids on on board with it, uh, you know. Yeah, what yeah. about you, Luke? What was the first reptile that you owned that was yours personally? So mine was definitely a leopard gecko. Um, so we didn't really know if it was female or male. We just assumed. So I thought it was girl, a girl all the way up to this point. And I was like, wait, this is a boy. So then I started changing the names. And I was like, girl, boy, girl, boy. <laughs> and then once it passed away, I was like, it's a boy. <laughs> Good time to figure that out. And... Whenever I started getting into snakes, is four years old, and that's when I got that leopard gecko. I got the old fudge the numbers there, but close enough. <laughs> Whatever. Listen, I've been breeding snakes for fifty years. Yeah. What's your What's your favorite reptile that you own? 
me? Yeah. Jeffrey and Liam by Banana Ball Python named Austin. Austin? Is that a... That one's a boy? Mm-hmm. Or you're not sure yet? Boy. <laughs> How old is it? Like four or three. You planning to breed that one or is that one just a pet? Both. <laughs> Until it's breeding season, it's just a pet. But once it becomes breeding season, then a breeding snake. Okay, what's here's the next question, and, and Scott will love this one. What's the next <laughs> reptile that you want to get? Any dreams that you're hoping to get that you got to make Dad buy for you? I think it's whatever one I'll get him. <laughs> Have to think on that one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> when I took him to Tenley, he had 50 bucks he'd earned in, in tour money. He found that out. When you walk in the door, so every table it was, I need this, I need this, I need this. So that was the experience. I Fifty like bucks won't go very far at Tim Leon. It I will not. Like, I feel like the next ant reptile I want has to be a chameleon. Yeah, okay. Especially a panther the mic, chameleon. The mics can't hear you, bud. <laughs> Not they get all of them. A panther chameleon. That's that's a lot of work. Is that something you're gonna take care of by yourself? Yes, I would do anything. I hope so, because I don't chameleon, so you'd be on your own. Yeah, your dad doesn't chameleon. He does everything else except for chameleon. Pretty much. So you okay. Names are iguanas. I don't mess with them. Yeah, yeah they like to eat so. every day, uh-huh. all day. Now, Just like my bearded dragon. Now, you've been the victim of vendors and even myself and other staff members just giving <laughs> Luke reptiles. Yes. I was just talking with Tim about that on the way here. And I love it. Every time I see Tim, Luke gets a reptile. Oh, yeah. And I love it. Yeah, I love giving kids reptiles. It's 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 uh it's a fun thing. I, I remember I used to give a lot of corn snakes away to kids. If it was their first uh first <coughs> reptile, I'd give them a corn snake and that was my first snake. Yeah. Back when I worked at Petco back in <laughs> high school. Yeah. Back in the gap. <laughs> back in the gap. Well, we're just uh kinda coming off of a a fun couple of weekends. Um, you know, not to drag too much into it uh, but you know kind of recap some of the shows we've had in the last couple of weekends well i just got back from arkansas that was a great show uh, i think it was that uh, little rock area right uh jacksonville yeah so it's outside of little rock near uh near bb arkansas where i got a bunch of families so got to see some family was down there and uh i guess the arkansas vendors really liked me because they demanded i come back there in december so <laughs> back it's by popular good demand. to be wanted uh-huh. in arkansas I hear. yes <laughs> It's a tough crowd, so if you can win them over, you've done well. And we had uh, Corey had the show up in Rhode Island, right? That was yeah, a pretty Corey, successful show. Corey was up in Rhode Island. That was a, that was a pretty good show. Uh, had a really good vendor turnout up there, and uh, pretty good, pretty good door turnout. That's that's a that's a pretty strong area up there for us. Uh, <coughs> we always seem to drag a lot of new people into that show, so it's it's pretty cool. Yeah, Corey does a great job managing those areas up there. Yeah, King Corey. of the North. That's yeah, good. King of the we North. Had, uh, we had another Florida show, right? No, no. Oh. I was actually in Florida doing, uh, I was down there at Iguana Fest. Oh, yeah. How uh, was Iguana Fest? Iguana Fest was great, uh, you know, except for my cold blooded self from being up here, being down in Florida. It was very, very hot and humid. But uh, it was a good time, you know. Uh, Brittany and I went down there and did some volunteering, helped out with the, with the, uh, with the festivities and uh, it was it was fun. Uh, we raised a bunch of money for for the iguana conservation and got to see Ty. So it was a good time. That's cool. Did you manage to come home without bringing home animals, or did you bring some home? So I had actually won a sulfur uh, water monitor from Mike's Monitors in the U.S. Arc auction. Well, not U.S. Arc auction. It was auction for uh, for iguana land. So. That's coming in next week, and I have to build an enclosure for it. Well, I think Zach's already got it built, but super excited for that because I don't have anything from Mike yet. He's a super cool guy. Uh, yeah. You know, the first That's times I've been in the ARBC event, I was right across from Mike the whole time. It was driving me nuts. Yeah, he's just, got, like, the good stuff. Yeah. His displays are next level, and his animals are match. I mean. Well, not only that, but, like, him and his wife are, like, 
super awesome people. I spent some time on the phone with them and and uh, always talked to him in passing and stuff. But uh, he's just a good good dude. Like, yeah, I always love running into that in the the reptile industry. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> so where else were we? we had Murfreesboro too, right? No, Murf- yeah, that? Murfreesboro was a couple weeks ago. Yeah, we had Phoebe down there. Mm-hmm. That was uh, unfortunately our last time at that venue there. No oh, bummer into that. I guess they're selling it, so we have to find a new spot. I've been told we need to go to Memphis. Brian keeps telling me. I know. Memphis is a hard one. We've been looking for it spots is. down there, but everybody thinks because Elvis walked into their venue back in the 60s, it's worth yeah, boatloads of money. <laughs> sure. Yeah, we, we, get, we, we get an Elvis impersonator maybe, and then maybe they'll drop the price. You can do it. <laughs> no, I couldn't. <laughs> That's in your that's in your uh, your coordinator vendor uh, no, list of things I, to do. No, that's not my resume anywhere. <laughs> and then we've got uh, got some busy shows coming up, right? Now, Knoxville is coming up, and isn't that one just booked to the to the hilt? Yeah, yeah. Knoxville's booked heavy. Yep, Knoxville's uh, gonna be a good one. We got St. Louis this weekend. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, the homecoming show this weekend. That's always good for. You know, a, a packed house, wall to wall. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll I'll be up in Boise this weekend. Crank uh, ninety doing our show up there. As we keep stretching out west. Uh, that's that's actually a really good show too. Yeah, that Boise show. Uh, this is what the third go around. Yeah, third time. And it's just continuing to grow and grow. Mm-hmm. It's kind of nice moving out into a, an area where uh, we're meeting all new vendors. Uh, you know, a lot of people that we haven't seen here in the Midwest. So we're kind of build, building a little Western army to start working uh, into some other cities out that direction. Oh, yeah. It's uh, it's definitely uncharted territory. But the people out there are really nice. And uh, we're, we're working on bringing some more shows out there. It's just, uh, you know, just working around the established shows that are already there and, you know, continuing to grow our community and industry. So... Luke, are you going to the show this weekend? What show? The St. Louis Show Me Reptile Expo. Only if my dad takes me, which he never is. Well, that's because we're in Knoxville, so we got to talk to your mom. Talk to your All mom. All right, talk, let's talk, go. Talk, talk to your grandpa. Let's get to the show. Weekend. You can trick or treat. You can carry a Halloween <laughs> bag around and see if people dump reptiles into it for you. Why is this too smart? If they recognize you, they probably will. Or say yeah. <laughs> snake or treat. Snake or tree? Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> Hang that up in a window sign. So, Luke, have you been uh, learning about the genetics of your ball pythons? Well, I got one killer bee, one banana ball python, and the rest are regular ball pythons. Oh, you got a bunch of bunch of normals. That's that's pretty cool. You could you could do something neat with that uh with that banana Normal. and that killer bee. New the ban- Killer B doesn't know which is up or down. Yeah. Oh, got he's got some, the wobble. Got the wobble, so that's a pet only. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't wouldn't breed that one. Uh-huh. So we got the man and we got a normal we can mess with right now. What other morphs, what morphs are you hoping somebody gives you at the next show? <laughs> Cinnam- cinnamon, lesser, pastel. All Ooh. three genetics in one. That's, that's, a, that's a pretty good snake. It makes some... Uh, you get a female and you can pair it up with your banana and it makes some pretty cool pretty cool stuff. Don't ask me, I don't know. Huh. I, don't, I don't know, Dick about he probably knows more about ball python genetics than I do at this point. I want another I'll, banana ball. I was top python. it back in two thousand seven and eight. Now it's <laughs> I'm lost. I don't even know anymore. It's just a ball python. I uh-huh. heard heard some rumors in our chats about uh, potential new locations coming up. Yeah, we've got a uh, we've got several getting ready to drop up in the northeast. Uh, we're actually working on a show in uh, in Massachusetts right now, so we're we're doing a show to uh, benefit a school up there that's kind of struggling uh, with with I guess some of their programs. So we're going to do a show and we're going to donate part of the proceeds to the school. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so that should be fun. Yeah, just reinvesting in the next generation again. Yeah, yeah. I mean that's. I don't know. That's why I've always kind of tried to do with this is just uh, roll it over and reinvest it back into the, into and the community. And then we do have, uh, what, we're f- our first move into Indiana before too long? Yeah, Fort Wayne. Yeah, it's 
Next month? Yeah. yeah, next month, yeah. It'll be a good time. Uh, we're at the Coliseum up there in Fort Wayne. Uh, that That's actually shaping up to look it, – it looks like it's going to be a pretty good show. So uh, <clears throat> yeah, I'm excited I, about being in Indiana. I think we got something that Corey's working on in Ohio too right now. Yeah. Play for nine current nineties. But uh no, nah, it's it's fun. We're just doing our thing, you know, keep trying to spread the reptile word around. Uh we are, you know, if you if you have a show me show in your area and you're an educator or a rescue, you know, please reach out because we are looking for more educators to participate in the show, you know, so kids like Luke can come over and play with your ball pythons and stuff. Thank yeah, same way, even calls. if you're a vendor at one of our shows, <laughs> but you, you would like to do some education with the reptiles that you work with, definitely reach out to us or talk to your show coordinator. Uh, you know, we would love to try to incorporate more of an educational aspect when possible. Well, that's that's actually part of our, our – we're reformatting the shows. We've been working on that in the background, and uh, we're working on adding more of an educational aspect to the shows, you know, because – I know a lot of people complain like, oh, people just come in and they're, they're window shopping or whatever. And it's like sometimes that's what happens at shows. Like a family comes in the first time and they're, like, they, they're looking around. They see something that piques their interest or they get over the fear. Then they go home and they research it. And then they come back the next show and they're like, I'm, I'm ready to get this, you know, this lizard. We've been, we've been uh, researching it for three months, four months, and uh, we're ready to pull the trigger on it. You know? so I saw a lot of that in Arkansas this weekend. Right, and so they'll be back in, in mm -hmm. December, and they'll, they'll, they'll purchase an animal. Mm -hmm. yeah. People you, are showing up. You can up. bet if you let a kid hold a snake for the first time, it's going to be all they talk about for the next month at home. This, yeah. this still to this day, I don't know how many reptile, how many kids' hands I've put reptiles in over the years, but that's still my favorite thing to watch that, that flip switch in their eyes when they go from being afraid to just absolutely obsessed with, with the reptile. Like yeah, I, I especially love when the kid holds it and then they get real excited about it and they turn around and try to hand it to their parent and the parent is like, nope, no. nope, I'm scared. <laughs> yeah, I remember just in Davenport a couple weeks ago, we had a girl came in and she looked over the little counter as you're walking in and saw some snakes and just tears, waterworks. She's freaking out. Like 30 minutes later, she's over at the rescue table. She's petting this Okada tortoise over there, and she's hanging out having a great time. Like, that kind of shit is, like, why, like, I love doing this. Yeah, I was – so I was on the plane last night, and I've got this really bad habit of I love to talk to people on the plane because I'm just bored on the plane. And uh, I was talking to this uh, nice couple. They were from Michigan, and uh, I talked to them a good chunk of the flight, and the lady was, you know, she said she's deathly afraid of snakes and everything like that. And uh, – her and her husband decided that they're going to look up one of the shows and, you know. Check it out. Yeah, they might actually go to the Fort Wayne show because they live oh. in South Michigan and I was telling them about it. And they're like, well, maybe we'll drive down there and check it out, you know, because I was explaining to them how a lot of it's just irrational fear that's been bred into us for generations. So, so I'm sure by then they'll probably think that if I'm you and I'm there. And yeah. I'll they'll be like, hey, it was cool again. talking to you on the plane. Uh-huh. <laughs> like, not, Mi not Mickey. Yeah, not. Yet again. Maybe. Yeah, I know Luke has friends over all the time that are just like obsessed with all his animals. They can run to his room, then they want to go down to the basement and see all my stuff. And that's always fun. So that's why I have a lock on the door to my hotel room now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you definitely got to lock them up. But that's that's the cool thing about it is that, it, you know, you just have to change one mind or educate one person, and it just spider webs out from there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. The ed education, breaking that stigma is the first step. Yep. So, uh, what about you, Luke? Did snakes used to scare you, or have you always been pretty brave with them? Never. Never? They were never scary? Also, whenever I got bored of all my snakes, I was playing Fortnite and cranking 90s on all my opponents. <laughs> yeah, his, his... I think a lot of reptile keepers do that. <laughs> his ball python will be hanging out around his neck while he's sitting playing Fortnite for <laughs> two hours. Most of the time he keeps track, but sometimes we have to go find it in the couch somewhere because it <laughs> wandered off on him. Well, at least it's warm there. Yeah. Well, yeah. So. We're just uh, going to keep pushing education and uh, trying to expose all these kids <laughs> to uh, reptiles. I think that's great. Um, like, like you said, working with with some of the uh, you know different people in the – in the community to try to bring in the educational aspect more and more. 
Uh, so hopefully we'll be able to, to launch that more into the shows going forward. Um, and we're still in need of uh, additional staff. We could we could use more coordinators. Yeah, we could use a couple more coordinators. All right, so just to kind of kind of recap that real quick, what kind of requirements are you looking for? Uh, we're kind of looking for people, you know, that, that know about reptiles and uh, really care about what they're doing. Uh, I guess passionate people. Yeah, passion's a good word for it. Uh, clean people. Yeah. You know, somebody you could really sit in the car with for eight hours and yeah, that, that not helps want to a strangle. Uh -huh. <laughs> you definitely need weekend availability. That's uh -huh. what yeah. all of our shows are. Yep. Weekend a clean driving record. Uh -huh. Yep. Be a good driver. Be kind of charismatic. You know, you, you want to be entertaining to people. You know, that's that's part of the job is we go ahead and make it an exciting experience when we walk in. And you just take tickets and you know send them on their way. What kind of, what kind of expectation they have for the show? Even when they're, I, I love to joke around people, you know, making their experience, you know, awesome from the day to the second they walk in the door to the second they leave. And I'm usually checking out what, what'd you get, what's going on, can I take a picture of you guys, you know, how how things go, can I have a family picture, you know, things like that, you know, just make that experience as best as they can for the for the money they spent. Yep. Um, obviously, age wise, 21 and up, because yeah. we do have to be able to check in and out of hotels. Yep, 21 and up. Drive a company vehicle and all that fun stuff, so. Yeah, it's it's a good time. You basically get paid to go on vacation, hang out at a reptile show. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, getting paid money part. to travel and play with reptiles. What more could you want? Yeah, I mean, I don't even consider it work most of the time. It's it's a good time. I guess Luke's checked out. All right, well, we'll uh, we can probably go ahead and wrap it up. I think we're getting close. Luke, why don't you uh, jump back up to the mic and tell everybody why they need a reptile in their life? <laughs> This is the only animal you'll ever care for, and it's the best because it can pretty much do anything, even choke you out in jujitsu and defeat all your opponents at jujitsu. <laughs> and it's so much fun to play around. You can use it as a little neck pillow on the airplane as long as the guards don't catch you. Right. And yeah. don't make take it snakes safe. On yeah, yeah. There's a there's a whole movie explaining why we don't take snakes on planes. <laughs> yeah. But it's and still fun. Don't really do jujitsu with the snake. <laughs> You'll probably or let it choke you out. <laughs> I think I'm gonna give you some some of this pent up energy and go clean some snake tubs tonight. Yep. No. <laughs> Come over to my house and clean I some snake tubs too. And the thought of cleaning <laughs> snake tubs, Luke is out. Yep. Luke has left the building. It's pretty typical. <laughs> pretty typical, yep. So as cleaning comes up, he's out. So. All right, everybody. We'll take it easy. We'll see you guys next week on episode four. See you guys. Good.